Welcome back. I have finally got it sorted out. Um, so just for the recap, what we did was um, we derived this equation. Looks too complicated. So um, what we'll do is um, we'll go to the um, Octave console and um, Octave editor and try to understand um, through one real example um, what is the maximum likelihood about. Okay. Um, we will see the limitation of this programming of this equation and then we will come up with the shortcut of that um, so that you can directly estimate the maximum likelihood so um, this is uh, the Octave um, GUI editor that I have um, if you're not familiar or if you do not know where to get Octave from I have put uh, miscellaneous videos um, where I have described where to get the Octave GUI version and how to install it okay um, if you don't know Octave, if you do not know MATLAB and if you know some other tools it doesn't matter um, as long as you understand the concepts then it is perfectly fine right this is just a tool to explain you what is actually going on here so um, I have written a small script um, and I will take you through the script what actually goes on line by line but let me run this first um, and let me see if everything is going fine yeah it looks good to me um, so let us see um, what is going on here first of all um, I have got two sets of collections of data Okay, I'll tell you th what kind of data it is. And one is a smaller set, Y, and the other one is a bigger set, Y2. Okay, and uh, if you're wondering what set it is, then it is basically this D. It is basically this D, okay? And um, the D which I have got the collection of data points from. So this is D, X1, X2, X3, X4 to Xn, okay? So I have Y1 and Y2, which is basically D of different size. And uh, so let's see first of all we already have y so this is our uh, workspace so you can see the size of the two elements if I am can drag this okay let me try and drag this um, so you can see that um, the y y is only 100 elements and the other one is 10,000 elements okay right at the bottom okay so let us see what y is then I will tell you what is going on here so let's just print y. What is y? Okay, so y is, well, I can see there's some set of numbers around. And what are these numbers? So basically, I have got the collection of the samples of temperatures in some region, which is supposed to be very cold, okay, and in some area. So the setup is like this. I have a, um, if you want a better intuition, then let's plot this as well, okay? So let's plot this guy plot y and uh, if I expand this so basically it is I have got 100 different samples okay or 100 different estimates of the temperature which I have taken and you can see that well um, it varies from 4 degrees it is in terms of degrees and it goes to minus 1 so there's some region um, where we have got um, they have collected the samples and uh, this is what they have got now the problem is um, I cannot put this on the website. Let us say that this is a meteorological data and I want to say that well um, this is the temperature in this particular city or this particular region. So I cannot give 100 different sets of temperatures, right? I need to say well okay um, I need to estimate the best possible match um, in the probabilistic sense or statistical sense. So now the idea is that well I need to find a maximum likelihood estimation of this data set and I need to come up with the estimate which says to me that okay um, this estimate that I'm giving you for the temperature in this particular region or the city is the best fit that I have got um, statistically okay so so now you might wonder that well how these temperatures have got collected so well you can assume that well you can send 100 different people to 100 different places um, within that small region and measure the temperature and update you or you can go 100 times at 100 different locations and measure the temperatures and collect the data set okay and the idea is that all these data samples what we are assuming that they are independent okay they are independent so basically um, you can consider this C1, C2, C3, C4, Cn as the 100 different containers and each container has got only one sample which I have picked up which I have taken as a measurement of the temperature okay and I'm assuming that well um, whenever I go to the next place the measurement I get is independent of the measurement I had from the previous place that is the basic assumption that I have it's very simple um, okay it's very simple um, 
If you find it difficult, then t let me know. I will try to explain you in the blog, or you can leave the comments on the YouTube videos as well. So the setup looks like this. I have got 100 different sets of temperatures in a small region, or maybe you can say a mid-region, and I want to give to somebody, um, let's say to the uh, to the news agency that well okay this is the temperature of this region I cannot give hundred different hundred temperatures right it is impractical so I need to come up with the best estimate of the temperature in the maximum likelihood sense so this is perfectly fine so now I have the equation of the maximum likelihood estimator and it says that well um, the theta MLE is basically the argument max of this equation so now if you observe closely this equation um, which what is the parameter uh, what parameter we do not know we do not know what theta is okay well not exactly um, we do not know what theta is um, what we know is the temperature but what we do not know is what is the theta MLE okay so we will sweep across the different we'll, as we'll take different random values of theta and uh, we will sweep across and we'll try to find out at what point the probability distribution hits maxima for this value of theta so what I have done here is I have written a very simple script it is just a two line code and what it says is that I have got a sweep okay this sweep is my theta sweep okay and I'm saying that well I am sweeping my temperature from minus 2 and I'm going to 2 degrees and I'm taking a step size of 0 0.1 degrees okay and uh, I will collect the probability. So this is LK is basically the likelihood probability distribution function. Um, uh, uh, we'll discuss about the likelihood function, okay? But just assume that this is the likelihood. Well, it is. Uh, this is the. Uh, this is basically the likelihood function also. But let's not go into that at the moment. Um, so I have the likelihood function, the probability distribution, and it is exponent. And now what I have done is I have ignored this term, okay? I have ignored this term, and the reason I have ignored this term is because if if you try to maximize this it is as good as maximizing the whole of it okay so this is not required now if you increase the value of n then this fraction becomes very small okay so numerically it is not feasible so you can simply ignore this term you just you can just maximize this part and say that well it is equally true um, for both the parts being there okay the both the product parts being there so that part I have ignored and what I have said is is exponent minus sum y minus sweep of k to the power of 2 divided by 2 now I am assuming that the variance is equal to unity so I am variance is unity sigma square equals to 1 so I have ignored it here very simple and uh, so let us see that how the distribution looks like so uh, what we are doing here is that L k L is basically our this probability distribution of theta data given theta okay and uh, so well what is what does how does L look like how does L look like um, so let us plot this again so I'll just copy and paste um, into the command window so let's paste it here and uh, so how does the distribution look like well okay the distribution looks something like this so you might wonder um, why it looks something like a triangle and it doesn't look more like a Gaussian so these are all numerical anomalies okay so we will see um, but irrespective of that we can see that well there is a peak sitting somewhere and um, rest of the point we don't see much of the probabilities so what I have done here is I am trying to sweep I am sweeping across the different values of theta so this is the different values of theta which is the temperature so I sweep across this um, likelihood function the uh, MLE maximum likelihood function and the point at which my theta so this is the theta at which my probability has become maximum my likelihood function becomes maximum is the point which is my best possible maximum likelihood estimate it's very simple so at what point I have so if you see here if you see this region right um, so this is where the marker is so if I put my marker here and if you observe that bottom left corner it says 1.5 okay so what it says is that well um, my maximum likelihood estimation is 1.5 degrees so what it means is that out of hundreds and hundred different temperatures I have of this particular region the best estimate I can get I can say that well the max in maximum likelihood sense this region has the temperature of 1.5 degrees okay I don't need to give them 100 different sets of temperatures I can say that well the temperature of Greenland um, or this particular city in Greenland is 1.5 degrees 
and that is it you can publish it so that is your best estimator then someone can come and ask you well, well how did you come up with this I can observe so many differences you can say well statistically this is the best estimate that we have okay so this is all about the maximum likelihood estimation it is so simple if you see the equation it looks so complicated but once you look at the data then the things look so easy now now the question is um, this triangle right um, why doesn't it look like uh, more more or less like a Gaussian sample and the reason is is basically the I do not have the sufficient resolutions and do not have the sufficient data points so but the problem is now there is a there is a numerical anomaly so let's discuss that also so I have also loaded Y2 which is giving me 10,000 samples I have taken 10,000 samples of the temperature around that area and uh, if I use that here then let's see what happens okay something strange is going to happen here so let's see I will press F5 and let's see what has happened there is nothing here the probability is zero so how come the probability is zero am I making some mistake here so the mistake is um, you might think over it and you can pause the video or I will continue here the mistake is because um, if you see if you larger the number of samples that you have and if you see here we are actually doing the summation of all the samples I am doing the summation of Y2 which is my 10,000 samples minus the sweep okay so larger the number of samples I have okay let's see so I have Y2 so if you do sum of Y2 if you do sum of Y2 see the value its value is 1.5 10 to the power of 4 and if it goes here well it is 1.5 10 to the power of minus 4 exponent of minus of that it will be close to 0 right and squared of that it will be close to 0 so you don't see any probability distribution at all so one way to get around this situation is basically instead of taking the sum you can take the mean okay you can take the mean now we are violating the condition here of uh, we are violating this condition instead of taking the sum we are taking the mean um, but it doesn't matter because for the maximum MLE sense it will still going to point to the maximum peak okay we are all we are interested why from this equation is we need to find the peak for what given theta I get the maximum likelihood so even if you replace the sum with the mean it should not matter okay so what I have done is I have made this thing as mean instead of sum and then I'm going to run it and bingo now we have a nice go we have a nice Gaussian go and because I have large number of samples and what it is telling is um, my temperature the my mean temperature is around 1.51 degrees okay so this is again the equation remains the same so this is where I am sweeping my theta okay this is the likelihood function which is parameterized over theta and when I sweep across theta then it, it tells me that well my distribution is maximum for at 1.52 degrees centigrade okay of my temperature so I can say that well okay um, in maximum likelihood sense my um, estimate for the temperature for 10,000 observation I have is 1.52 degrees larger the observation you have the better because it will more it will converge to the Gaussian distribution but it doesn't matter if you have the small sets also still you can do the estimation but there, that will not be very accurate okay so this is all about MLE now but there is a problem right I cannot uh, here what has happened is I'm sweeping I'm well I'm taking a guess that I want to sweep from minus 2 to 2 but this guess may not always be true okay um, I may I may choose from sweeping from minus three to I may I can sweep from minus three to five degrees also, um, and I can pick up the any steps I want. But this is not actually a realistic scenario. I cannot run something like this. Um, there is a better and more elegant way of coming with with the maximum likelihood estimate, and we will discuss this in our next video. Okay, we don't need to go through all this um, high level computation there is a better way of doing it and we'll discuss it in the next video okay so I hope you enjoyed this uh, you got the intuition better and uh, you got the intuition cleared and um, I will see you in the next video bye bye